We all have this fantasy where if I had time, I'd clean my house from top to bottom, I'd write a book, I'd create something, I'd write a blog, I'd read all these books, I'd be so productive. And suddenly, guess what we all have? Most of us have time. A lot of time, even if you're still working from home, you're not commuting, you're not socializing. We suddenly have a lot more time than we had before. Most of us are thinking, you know what? I've realized I have no interest in cleaning my house. I'm not reading books. I'm not learning anything new. Why am I not using this time? And how can I become disciplined during this time? Well, the thing that stops us is always fear. You see, we're not very motivated now. Some of us are, most of us are not. A lot of us need structure. We need the structure of I get up, I go to work, I come home. On the way home, I go to the gym, then I make some phone calls, and then I see my friends. And now I've got all this time and nothing's happening. There's a proverb I love, and it says, if you want something done, give it to a very busy person. And I noticed myself in the first two days of being at home, I kind of wandered around, didn't really know what to do with myself. I read and I kept falling asleep. And then I got myself together and realized that we all need structure. We like structure. We like a timetable. After all, normally you wake up and your day has a structure. I get up, I make breakfast, I juice, I go to work, I do this, I do that, I have lunch, I come home, I pick up the dry cleaning, I go to the gym, I pick up the kids, and we have a structure. And what you must do now to have discipline is to give yourself a structure, even write a timetable. You need to get out of bed. The worst thing you can do is lie in bed, put on the TV, stay in there, look through Facebook, play on your computer. Suddenly hours have gone by and you've done nothing. And doing nothing is actually incredibly tiring because you're not motivated or focused. So create a timetable and stick to it. I will get up at X. And the first thing I'm going to do is meditate or work out. You might go, I can't work out. I've got a tiny apartment. Yes, you can. Just doing the plank, doing crunches, doing sit-ups, and doing push-ups will work. You need a space the size of a bath towel. Doing some deep breathing, using big bottles of water or even cans as weights will help you. You must exercise. First of all, it makes you feel good. It gets your lymph going. Your immune system is your lymphatic system. Your lymph doesn't have a pump. If you exercise, you boost your immunity. If you boost your immunity, you are less susceptible to any virus and it gives you something very good to do. Skipping for five minutes a day is great for boosting your lymph. Trampolining, if you have a little rebounder, press up, sit up, skipping. These are enough. You can do press ups against a wall, but do something. And when you've done those two things, I've meditated, I've exercised. And by the way, here's a way to get great discipline. Have a friend and say every morning at 10, we exercise together on Zoom, on FaceTime, on Skype. There are many, many generous people giving away yoga classes, exercise classes, Pilates classes. Sign up. Sign up with a friend because when you commit to doing something with another person, your chance of sticking it goes up by a massive 80%. If you think, you know, I keep planning to do those workouts and I miss them, do it with a friend. Go for a walk, go for a cycle ride. At the very least, do this online and do it with a friend so that you can't let them down and they can't let you down. Now you've got two things out of your way, meditating, exercising. And now give yourself a timetable. If you're not doing your job from home and you're not homeschooling, give yourself a timetable. What am I going to learn today? You see Harvard and Yale and so many colleges are giving away free online programs. Libraries are streaming books. YouTube is the best university in the world. Decide I will learn something new and watch something new every day. 
and then have a lunch and make a better lunch and then decide who you're going to talk to. I'm going to Skype an old person who's alone, talk to a friend, talk to my family. And in the afternoon, well, I'm going to do some work. Maybe I'm going to do housework, cleaning out drawers, emptying cupboards, giving stuff away. Maybe I'm going to do more learning. And in the evening, that's my time to reward myself. I'm going to watch a movie, read a book. You see, human beings react very well to reward. And we all know as parents who say to our kids, do your homework, then you can go out to play, clean you, clean your room, and then you can have an ice cream, eat your lunch, and then you can have a little bit of dessert as a reward. We function much better with a reward. With goals, we have purpose and direction. Without goals, we kind of flounder around. If you can go, yeah, I'm floundering, I'm definitely floundering. I'm going from the couch to the bedroom, half watching TV, I'm on the computer all the time, I'm not doing anything with my life, and I go to bed feeling I've wasted my time. You need to have goals. Goals give you purpose, direction, clarity, and focus. So write out a time to remember when your kids go to school, they have a time to when you go to work. You have a mental title. Give yourself a title. What are you doing today? And then give yourself a reward. When I have done these things, meditated, exercised, learned something new, done something new, connected to someone else, then I take a reward. I reward myself with my favorite movie. You see, if you don't take it is a reward and you just watch the movie the minute you get up. You feel bad all day because you feel like, I didn't earn this. When I was writing my first book, the way I motivated myself was say every day if I write three chapters, then I get to watch my favorite show. I get to make something yummy to eat. I'd even say to myself, my first coffee of the day or my first tea I have that as I'm working on a chapter or a spell check because we need to have the reward. If you have the reward without the action, you always feel kind of guilty. You can't enjoy that time because your mind's going into, I could have, would I should be doing something else. When you've done the something, I was like, oh, I deserve this. We all know we go to the gym and come home, we feel so good. I did a workout, I did something. So you can give yourself structure and discipline and motivation with a timetable, with something exciting to do and with a reward. There's a great proverb that says, to be happy you need someone to love, somewhere to go, and something to do. There's someone to love right now, maybe you. Working out as a way of loving yourself, meditating as a way of loving yourself, giving yourself structure, eating better foods as a way of loving yourself. The second part of that is something to do. And there is so much to do. We're so lucky we live in a world of Wi-Fi where we can learn so many things, read great books, study great content, talk to other people. Somewhere to go? I can hear you saying, where am I going? I'm in the house. Go inside. We all want time for ourselves. And the other way to give yourself structure and discipline and focus is don't use these words. I'm in lockdown. I'm in quarantine. I'm stuck in the house. I feel like I'm in prison. I'm cooped up. None of us are actually in quarantine. You are not locked in at all. You're allowed to go out for a walk to the store. You may feel cooped up, but you're not cooped up. You're not a little chicken in a coop. Your freedom is still there. You're free to eat what you want, do what you want, wear what you want. When you use these words, I'm trapped, I'm cooped up, I'm stuck, my freedom's been taken away. I feel like this is an apocalypse. I feel like I'm in a war zone. The way you feel is linked to the words you use. You notice I'm saying all the time, I'm at home, I'm indoors. I don't say I'm in lockdown, because I'm not locked down. I don't say I'm in prison in my house, because I'm not. I don't say I'm going crazy with the stress. I'm at home. I'm indoors. I'm lucky to have a home to be indoors. 
I have food, I have heating, I have love, I have people to connect with, and you do too. And you might think, no, I don't, but you do. There's always someone that you can connect to. There's always something you can do, somewhere you can go, and someone you can love. And there's another proverb I love that says, to have real balance, you need to have a relationship that's good, a career that's good, and something just for you. And many people say, I've got a relationship and I got a career, but I haven't got anything just for me. What could you have just for you, an interest? It could be yoga, it could be breathing, it could be keeping bees, it could be potting plants, growing orchids. It doesn't matter what it is. It's what I call the triangle, a relationship that's good. And if you don't have a relationship yet, as you build a relationship with yourself, focus on all the great things about you, be more ready to grow a relationship with another person when this passes and it will pass. Work on your career while you're at home. What could you learn? Could you learn communication skills, marketing, search engine optimization? Could you learn IT skills? Could you learn another language? Could you read some more books? So you can work on your relationship, work on your career, and work on the thing that is just for you. It doesn't matter what it is. It's not important. You could work on learning to eat better food. You could batch cook. You could study. So you need structure, discipline, and focus. And fear makes you run away from all of that and just meander around. When you have goals, you'll feel better. And please don't live in fear. You're probably immensely safe. You're at home. You're safe. You have an immune system. You live in a country where they will take care of you. Yes, we have to be very careful with distance and washing our hands. We're all in this together. One day you'll look back and think, gosh, you know what? I really could have used that time better. You know, I had a client, a very rich woman, who went to jail for VAT fraud, tax fraud. And she was what you call one of the ladies who lunch. She was very wealthy and her life was really about going out to lunch and she lived in a beautiful gated home. And when she went to jail, that was a shock to her system, but she trained to be a yoga instructor, a Pilates teacher, an aerobic instructor. When she got out, she went back to that prison every month and gave free yoga classes to the other prison. She said, you know, I lived in a gilded cage all on my own with staff. And actually, I I love those women in jail. We became great friends. There are people who have been to jail. Martha Stewart, Jeffrey Archer, Jonathan Aitken, if you know who they are. And they've used that time well. They learned something new. They did something. And they will all say, you know, it wasn't the end of the world. Something good came of it. And one day you look back and think, wow, I had eight weeks off. I didn't even do anything. I ate potato chips and binge watch Netflix and felt terrible. Don't be that girl, that boy, that man, that woman. Use your time well. And if you're at home with children and partners, help them too. Say, let's work out together. Let's cook together. Let's study something together. Also be aware that if they don't want to, that's fine. You study your stuff. Help other people too. And if you're alone and your friends are alone, say, let's study this course together. It's like being in a book club. And let's communicate every day about what we learned, what we're doing. You have no idea how brilliant your potential is. You know why? Because your potential expands as you move towards it. Then it expands again, and then it expands again. And when your mind moves to a new potential, it never, ever, ever goes back again. Watch some great YouTube content. Use my motivation videos or my meditation videos. Remember, please like, please share, please subscribe. Please think of someone else who could benefit from this too. We're in this together. We'll get through this together. And if you're smart, you'll look back and think, I used that time well. 
See you very soon.